Hey everyone, Kelly here, and it's time for my October reading wrap up part two. I did split this into two halves, so if you haven't seen the first one, it's not like you need to have seen that one to see this one, but it's out there. I'll link it down below. And I was just um, reviewing these in the order in which I read them. So these are just in order of reading, except for I will talk at the end about the ones I read with my daughter. My cat is already, I swear, this cat. Every time I start recording, all of a sudden he's like, show me all the attention, but he has not been near me at all, all day. It is like this spot, me sitting here, that means something. It's not like I feed him after I record or anything. I have no idea. But anyway, let's talk about these books. And unfortunately, there are quite a few I didn't love. A couple of bright spots. So first up, I have A Fatal Grace by Louise Penny. This is book two in the Inspector Gamache series. And yeah, I did not like this one. I ended up giving this one two stars. I given the, okay, now, sorry. Now the cat is playing with the balloons. My daughter, it's her fifth birthday this weekend. We got some helium balloons and he is playing with one now. So great, like, you know, like the foil kind of balloon or helium balloons that make noise when you tap on them. Yeah, well, we're just going to deal with it because <laughs> they'll either be doing that or attacking me, whatever, the cat. Like I was saying, I did not like this one. I given the first book four stars. This one I gave two stars. I am going to try another one, but I'm feeling like really hesitant now about the series because this one was just a big disappointment for me. I, okay. So if you don't know anything about the series, this is just like the basic, like each one is in different, you know, like kind of like murder mystery type thing, but it's in a small French Canadian town. And so like the atmosphere is kind of nice. I like, I really liked the atmosphere in the first book. This one, not, not as much. I don't know. I don't know what it was. I don't feel like I really got the small town vibes as much out of this one. Um, I also just didn't really love Inspector Gamache as much in this one as I did in the first one. And then this one had a lot of like fat phobia in it. Like there's a little girl in this that every time she's talked about they talk about how like gross she is and all this stuff about her being fat and that's not just like the characters talking like that's in the like just narration of the book and so it's like makes me think it's like the author doing that instead of the people the characters just being bad mean characters yeah I just didn't like that aspect in this and I just didn't have enough of the like fun small town cozy vibes that I got from the first one the characters didn't seem as rich as in the first one. So I'm giving it one more try because this is a very beloved series. It's very long running. Like it's still running. Um, yeah, we're like in book 14, 15, something like that. I don't know. And so I'm going to give it one more chance. I've heard that the first ones aren't as good, but I am not one of those people that can push through a bunch of books. So this is the last chance. Let me spin it one more. All right. The angle has probably changed a bit because my kids just needed some dealing with. Um, so now... Hopefully they will be watching their iPad and I can finish this. So ne the next one I want to talk about is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. This one in one of the books I read later was for a video where I was ranking new releases. So I was reading the first chapter, kind of getting my feel for the book and ranking them and then ranking the end results. So if you want to see that, I'll link it down below. This book is based off of Korean mythology. And at the very beginning, the first chapter jumps right into the action. I really love the beginning of this where we are like right into this village who every year sacrifices a girl to the sea to be the sea god's bride because the sea god is creating all these like big storms that are ravaging the village. And this year, the chosen girl to be the, the bride um, is in love with this boy. And the boy's sister, Mina, is our main character. And she just feels a lot of sympathy for her brother and this girl that they're in love with each other. So she takes this girl's place. I just couldn't remember the, the, the original bride's name. But yeah, Mina takes her place, sacrifices herself instead. And then we're following Mina in the like, um, whatever, the sea god's realm. I don't know what it's called exactly. Um, trying to like just save her village. And she's trying to break this like pattern of having to have sea god's brides. So you'll probably hear the cat in the background again. Sorry, it's just gonna be one of those days where he's going to every once in a while make some noise just for fun. Um, yeah, so I really loved this one at the beginning. I It kind of lost me a little bit in the middle, but then I really enjoyed the ending and the fun, and the themes of this book that, that when everything started coming together, I really enjoyed that. I thought the writing was beautiful. Um, I really enjoyed our main character, Mina. She just 
had one of those personalities that you want to root for because she just really wanted to do what's right for her people, even if it meant that it wouldn't be the right thing for her. She just really wanted to save everybody. And yeah, I just, and I liked her and I liked a lot of the other characters that started getting developed as it went. I definitely liked the very beginning and like the last like third, the best. So I gave it four stars instead of five, but still an enjoyable read. And then next I finished Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman. This was one of our group reads for the Fall into Reading Challenge. And this one did not go the way I expected. I, I knew that this was gonna be different than the movie, which I love the movie. And I'd heard that this is much different, but I heard a lot of people say they like both the book and the movie just as their own thing. So I was expecting to still enjoy this one. And I really did it. And a lot of people in our group read did it. Um, there were some people that didn't even finish it. There were several people that gave it like three stars middle ratings. I feel like there might be a couple of people that liked it more than that. Um, and then I gave it two stars. I did not enjoy this book. Ultimately, I don't know, it started off really good. Like this um, doesn't really have chapters as big sections, which I think was a little hard for me to uh, to push through. Um, I like to have some of those like natural breaks. And the first section I was enjoying, I was liking kind of like the whimsical, magical kind of vibe to it. Like there's not a lot of magic that's actually happening on page, but it just kind of has that feeling and the writing is very lush. So I was enjoying that and all the vibes, but it got like old quickly cause like things weren't really happening. And I could only take so many of just like the slightly magical vibes to pull me through. And so after that first section, I was like, oh, now I'm like really bored. And I really did not like most of the characters in this. Like we're following two, si like just like the movie, we are following two sisters that are part of like generations of like sisters that are passing down this kind of like a little bit of magic. Um, but the sisters themselves, don't, I don't think they ever really perform magic in this entire book. It's mostly the, the ants that do. Um, but the sisters are basically just going through the dramas of being, I don't know, they start off young, but most of the book, I would say they're like probably close to my age um, because the one has like teenage kids and just kind of like the dramas of what's going on at that time in life, love and um, taking care of kids and dealing with sister relationships and family stuff and grief and like all kinds of stuff stuff like that but not really <laughs> interesting because I don't like the main characters like I really really just did not like either of the of the sisters in this and so it made me hard to be invested in their stories and then the writing just kind of got old after a while so I just don't know if Alice Hoffman is for me I might try something else by her just because this is kind of one of her older ones obviously it's 25th anniversary edition I don't even know when this came out as the 25th anniversary edition so this has been around since 1995. So I might try something that she's written later, like in the last 10 years or so maybe. Um, but this was a disappointment, two stars. And then I read Cinders and Sparrows by Stephen Buckman. And um, this is a middle grade novel that had a lot of good stuff about it. And so I would try other things by this author, but ultimately had some pacing issues. Um, this is following this girl who now, what's her name, Sita. And um, she has been living in an orphanage and then suddenly gets this letter saying that she's inherited this manor. And so she's like, oh, I'm gonna find out that I have some family. So she goes to this manor. Well, it turns out there's a lot of stuff going on that not only is this like, connecting her back to her family that she had never known, but also that that's a family of witches. And so she's learning about her powers and all this stuff. And there is like a dark kind of aspect to this of like people trying to take advantage of her. She doesn't know who to trust, all that. And this one, I was, like I said, I was mixed because at the very beginning I was completely sucked in and I was just really loving kind of the like dark, middle grade vibes like it doesn't get so dark because it is middle grade but it had like that slight, slightly creepy perfect fall kind of vibes with this big manor house where there's not that many people there she doesn't really know all about her past there's mysterious stuff she's learning magic there's like creatures and stuff like that so there were some good vibes but then there's this whole like learning about your magic center section that I was getting pretty bored because it felt very repetitive and her kind of like discovering Thing. she's discovering new things but it's like in the same way over and over again so it felt just kind of very static in the middle and then like had more 
of an interesting ending where things start happening again. So I gave it three stars because I thought there was really good things about it and parts that I was very interested in, but there's a big kind of like repetitive magic learning slog in the middle that I think could have been broken up by more exciting things or just, I don't know. It wasn't, I wasn't invested in the middle section and pacing is like a big thing for me because I took me a long time to read this. This is like a middle grade fantasy should not take a ton of time to read I don't think and especially since like middle grades are kind of meant to be read you know read by children that need stuff to keep their interest and everything like you can still have great characters and great moments but like having a big slog in the middle I think is a is kind of detrimental to a middle grade novel so I will try something else by this author because I thought when the vibes were good the vibes were really good it just needed some pacing issues dealt with for me I don't know there are people that probably wouldn't mind the pacing but it was a little hard for me um next I picked up what moves the dead by T Kingfisher this was another one like this one that was part of that ranking new releases video so if you want to know more about that and this is a retelling of the fall of the house of usher by Edgar Allan Poe and I loved it I loved everything about it <laughs> this is the first T Kingfisher book I've given five stars I always like her books but I usually always give them five four stars because there's always just like one little thing that's keeping me from like pushing it to five but this one no it was like I loved everything about this I can't tell you a lot about what it's about since it is such a short novella but it, because it's based off of a very popular short story there's some parts that are just kind of like inherent like so we are following a character named Easton they were contacted by the um, Madeline Usher is that her name and um she sent Easton a letter saying that she's very sick um so Easton comes to the manor house and it's like perfectly gothy and creepy and spooky surrounded by like a lake that is very delightfully creepy and yeah it everything just has great vibes um and like the spooky vibes and as soon as Easton gets there they realize things are wrong here both with Madeline and her brother and so yeah it just follows that just like the fall of House of Usher it, it follows a lot of what the story does but gives a lot more you know character and what's happening what led up to this and all that I thought it was a great conclusion because sometimes horror books can like kind of leave it open ended a little bit or don't, don't really know how to end I thought this one was great character work even though it's so short I really loved Easton as a character and getting in their head that's where T. King Fisher's humor came in because she always writes really like good sarcastic humor but this is such like a serious tone to this like whenever the characters would talk to each other that it wouldn't really fit to put a lot of that humor in so it was placed in like Easton like we're in Easton's head and that humor is in the like inner dialogue so we still get that and the creepy imagery yeah and I mean this this like cover really does like fulfill the creepy Im imagery so love that one all right next I picked up Speak No Evil by Jana and Malcolm which is a like series from like the 1980s called Heart and Soul about these two people whose last names are Heart and Soul like a two teenage girl and a teenage boy and they solve mysteries. This one is one of those that is just like a nostalgic read for me. I've read these several times since like middle school and it's just like what I pick up when I just need some comfort and I don't want to like focus a lot on reading but I just want to like have it's it's totally comfort food book I would not necessarily recommend this to people nowadays because there is definitely some like 80s things that don't really like translate well to teens nowadays like I wouldn't give this to a teen now and expect them to love it um like in this one there's a lot of problem with like the male pro protagonist that you know of the two the male protagonist is very possessive of the female protagonist and like he's doing it in a protective way like because you know somebody in this one she's getting like these mysterious phone calls that become kind of stalkerish and so he's trying to be protective but it gives off the wrong vibe as like a woman in 2022 reading this so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to teens now but if you read these as a teenager let me know so we can have like a little reminiscent nostalgia or maybe you have a nostalgic series that you want to tell me about that we can kind of chat about this nostalgia things that you wouldn't necessarily give to a teen now but that still like hold a place in your heart that's what that was and then I have two things that I read with my daughter um I had talked the last time I was reviewing books that I read with my daughter 
that we are studying the golden age of Islam. And so we are both doing like historical books about that time period. But then I'm also doing current day books that involve Muslim main characters. So that or like, one of the main characters is Muslim so that she just kind of like gets both like the modern day of Islam and the medieval times kind of Islam as well. So kind of gives her both. So our contemporary book like that we just finished was Wish Tree. This is not Own Voices. This is by Catherine Applegate. So we have been doing ones that are Own Voices, but I just threw this one in because I just love the story. I had read it before. I still really like the story. I think I gave it four stars the first time I read it. And it's probably still four stars. Um, but it is just a, a book I really enjoyed reading to her. She really loved it. It is from the viewpoint of this tree who is a wish tree. So people like tie wishes to her on, I think it's like May day that they all like, so the first of May, they all, everybody in town like ties wishes to her, you know, and that's just like part of the thing. And so we follow the tree red and all of her animal friends. But then, um, one day somebody writes a like mean, like a hateful thing on the tree aimed at the girl that is living in the house, you know, where wish like red is the tree in front of this house. And in the house is a Muslim family with a young girl. And it's like, you know, hateful derogatory towards this family and that girl and how the tree wants to kind of like, um, help her out and have her feel at home here in this neighborhood and everything. And so that's what it's about. Like I said, it's not own voices at all, but I still thought it was a good story to read at this time. Um, but if we want to talk about own voices books, this was one of the history books that we read. This is the wonders we seek 30 incredible Muslims who helped shape the world. And this one is, is a beautifully illustrated and just beautifully done book. The, the pages are very like thick and glossy and pretty like because the colors themselves are these jewel tones throughout. And then they have like a portrait drawn of each of the people. And this just is about 30 different Muslims throughout history. Um, since we are doing the Middle Ages, I only read the first third of this book to her because we were just reading about the entries that were from that time period. The first like nine entries fell into that category. So we read the first third. I thought this was really good for a probably if they were gonna read themselves an upper elementary or middle grade audience. My daughter was able to listen to it. She's in second grade, but she wouldn't have been able to read it herself just based on like the amount of like vocabulary and the amount of words on the page but this was really well done i as a adult enjoyed reading it and i probably would go ahead and read the rest of it but it's too packed to the library so maybe another time we will pull this out again and read the rest of the people but i just want to mention this even though i didn't read the entire book so i didn't rate it because i didn't finish it i still wanted to say it that if you are wanting to know more about muslims throughout history this one is a good one that still has enough information that it would still be perfectly fine for an adult to read this and still you get a lot from it um then you can maybe like research more about somebody if you found them interesting but yeah I like the way this was illustrated and put together and everything so that is all the stuff that I read in the second half of October so like I said I have my first half wrap up link down below I also have that video I did about ranking some of the new releases and that's it for me today. I hope you all are doing well and I'll see you next time. Bye.